Today, I'm gonna to talk not only about what I carry in my camera bag into the field, but how I organize it in there so that it's easy for me to access whenever I want. Well, hey everybody, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. We're gonna talk about how I organize my gear to work with it really easily in the field so that I know where it's at even if I'm working with my pack in the dark. And I'm not gonna say that my way is the only way to do it by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it's, uh, it's a way that's worked for me over the years. And I think the most important thing is that you have a system and that you stick to it so that you get really well organized and you know where each and everything is. And I'm also gonna talk about a little checklist of things that I do when I'm packing my bag so that my gear is ready to go and I don't pull it out and go, oh my gosh, this lens is disgusting or there's dust all over the sensor. I've kind of run through my little pre-check uh, list that I do when I'm packing my bag. If you're hearing a little audio buzz in this video, please just uh, you know forgive me for that. I can't turn the AC off today. It's hot up here in the studio, and if I turn off the air conditioner, it's going to be a sweaty mess. I want to make sure that everybody knows, you know, not only am I putting a table of contents and links to all the products and gear that I'm talking about in this video uh, in the YouTube description. If you click show more, or you click the title of the video, depending on your platform. But also, we're now adding kind of a scrubber line with chapters so that different points, you can just scroll along and it'll show you, you can just click to go to the part of the video that you want to watch or that you want to rewatch in case there's something that you want to go back and review or there's part of the video that's interesting to you and part that's not. So, you know, one of the things, I, I've talked a lot about the different kinds of gear that I use and that I've learned work well for me in the field. And one thing that's been a recurrent question, both from workshop participants as well as viewers of the YouTube channel, uh, has been, how do you organize it? How do you keep all that stuff? How do you know what's where in your bag? And so I thought I'd dive in and just kind of give you my technique for this. You know, take what you like, ditch what you don't like. But I think the important thing, again, it's, it's never bad to reiterate this, is that you develop your own system that works for you. And I want to thank everybody for all the questions that you send in and thank everybody who's been supporting this channel and all the YouTube subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a button down there in the bottom right that you can just click. There's a little symbol you can click to subscribe. But thanks to everybody for driving the content because that's what this channel is all about. It's a, it's a conversation about all things photographic. So I'm gearing up. Tomorrow night I'm planning to go out to the east side of the Cascades. Uh, along a little south of the Columbia River along the John Day River and do some Milky Way photography. I want to test out some lenses and some tools that I've gotten uh, and also maybe get a last shot at the Comet Neowise. And I'm packing my bag. And I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to talk about what I do when I pack my bag. I think it's a lot less important to talk about what camera I'm tucking in here. I'm taking my, I'll take my Nikon Z6, which I'm filming this with right now. I have my Z7 sitting in here has kind of a surrogate for it. I'll probably take both cameras with me. But the Z6 is one I'm going to want to be using for the low light, high ISO work. And, you know, I have my F-stop Tilopa backpack here. It's got easy back panel access. Anybody who's been watching me for a while knows I love Tilope, the, the, the F-stop bags because of the quality of their harness system and the way that they put the weight onto your hips and the fact that they have such easy access and modular internal camera units that let you carry as much gear padded as you want along with other things in the bag. So, you know, I take my, my eye cup off of the Z6 or Z7, pop it off and slip it in as if it were a lens like that in the bag with its lens on it and then just tuck the eye cup around the side. Before I put my camera in the bag though, you know, whatever lens is on it, I want to have a quick look at it. If it's got any dust, I'll blow it off. If it's got schmutz on either its UV filter, if it has one, or just on the lens itself, I'm going to use a little residual oil remover as well as a clean microfiber cloth. You know, the minute I've used it and it starts to get schmutzy or I've sweat on it or got sunscreen on it or something, it goes loose in my camera bag into the washing machine dryer before it goes into a fresh Ziploc. If it's in the Ziploc, I know it's clean. If it's out, I know it's dirty. Um, so I'm going to clean that lens and I'm also going to grab a hold of my little sensor light, my little LED sensor magnifier, and I'm just going to pop that lens off and have a quick look up into my sensor. 
It looks really clean except for a little speck of dust up in the top left corner. I'll take my rocket blower, holding it upside down, blow that spot, have a look. Looking clean. So, you know, if it were really dirty, I would likely go ahead and do a sensor cleaning, whether that's a wet sensor cleaning or using a little gel stick. But I'm gonna make sure that that sensor's clean before I head out into the field. I don't wanna be dealing with sensor dust. Uh, and <clears throat> I'll show you how, but I'm gonna put this whole kit in the bag with me. I'm gonna look at each and every lens that I'm carrying out in the field. I usually put UV filters on my lenses just to protect them uh, from generally fingerprints, sunscreen, sweat, dust in the air. Um, so usually just blowing off my HD3 UV Hoya filter on the front of the lens is sufficient. You know, before I go ahead and tuck it in, there's the 20 millimeter 1.8 that I want to use on this trip. I keep my filters in these little mind shift uh, filter nests. I've got all this stuff linked in, in, on my uh, ATS gear page, AT, uh, hudsonhenry.com slash ATS gear, but I'll also put links to a lot of this stuff right in the YouTube description if you click on it. And you know, in, in my filter nest, I'm not gonna go through, I keep UV filters, uh, I keep polarizers, and neutral density filters in here. I usually carry a four, a six, and a 10 stop Hoya Solus ND filter, as well as a color intensifying filter for Milky Way and Star Wars to, to cut human light pollution. And I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna look at each one of those filters up against the light, and if there's dust, I'm gonna blow it off. If there's schmutz, I'm gonna use a little drop of this residual oil remover and a microfiber cloth and get them nice and clean. I'll have Zeiss wipes with me in the field in case I need them. So that's the stuff that's right here, easily accessible in my main compartment. You know, I always keep all my filters in 82 millimeter filter threads, and then I keep step up rings and sometimes magnetic filter holders that I've talked about in other videos and that are in my gear links. And I keep all that stuff in this little zipper pocket that's contained in the back of my pack in one of these little, uh, uh, it's, it's the, actually the, the step up rings that I recommend on Amazon come in these nice little kind of hard uh, plastic cases. These are from Fire Filters. And if you open this little slider, it's kind of a hard poly case. And I just keep those all stacked in there, all that stuff, all those, those step up rings and magnetic filter holders and magnetic lens adapters. I keep tucked in there, Ziploc shut. And the reason is, that way they're not clattering around loose in my bag. They're always right where I need them if I wanna grab them. And, you know, keeping these things kind of compartmentalized, if I wanna grab a lens, a package of filters that I need, and those filter adapters to throw in my fanny pack to just take an ultra lightweight kit, it's as easy as throwing a few things, a spare battery and a memory card in there. Boom, I'm good to go. All right, so that's, that's kind of my main compartment. It'll vary what lenses I keep in there. You can see I've got my 70 to 200 and I've got a 1.4 teleconverter. I kind of always have that in case there's wildlife or some crazy sports thing or a beautiful bit of light in the far distance when the rest of the landscape is, is boring. I've always got that longer lens with a teleconverter to kind of reach out further if I need to. All right, so there you go. That's that kind of basic thing. I have wing pockets on my bag. And in those wing pockets on one side, I keep batteries. These are spare headlamp batteries, AAA rechargeable in loop batteries. Uh, and also, I've got a MindShift camera battery wallet with four Nikon batteries to just make sure that I have plenty of power out with me in the field. I keep those in the wing pockets. If I use a battery, I don't put it back in the wallet. The wallet's only full of good, ready-to-go batteries. I put the other batteries loose in that wing pocket, and I know those need to get recharged when I get home. On the other side, I've got <clears throat> a little anchor battery that I can use to recharge my cell phone. My cell phone becomes a really critical tool when I'm doing night photography. I often use it to fire the camera for long exposures. I use my camera as a scouting aid. I use apps for scouting. I need it to have power. So this little guy could charge my phone several times and I can tell that it's full. It just, just sits there in the side pocket of my bag along with a USB-C cable to charge my, my Google Pixel phone. So that's right there. If I closed this up and looked around the side of my internal camera unit in sort of the main pocket, if you open this big flap here, 
there's a main pocket. I keep things kind of packed around that camera unit in there. So in there, I almost always have a warm hat and gloves, even in summer. You know, I'm going out into the desert and the mountains. It could get chilly at night. So I've got a pair of lightweight gloves I can actually work with along with a warm hat that I just keep in there all the time. I've got an even bigger battery in case I want to use that to power my camera with my, uh, with my Tether Tools um, dummy battery. I've got a little sound recording stuff just because of the videos that I do for you guys. Uh, and I've got some advanced panorama rails to be able to do really detailed, advanced multi-row panoramas. I've got some just extra tools for that. Along with a cover for my camera in case it gets really inclement, you know, if there's blowing water and I don't want to just completely inundate my camera with salt water, I can cover everything but the lens. Uh, and I've also got a bag like that made by F-Stop for this bag, a complete camera bag, waterproof cover that just goes over the bag like a backpacking cover. So that stuff's always in there all the time. I've got a little pocket underneath here that I keep spare stuff. I have a spare uh, butt cap for a Nikon Z lens and a spare body cap for the Nikon Z camera in case I need those. I also have the same for my, uh, for my, for my, my um, D850 or D500 if I'm carrying those. I have a little towel, a little travel towel by REI to just dry things off if I needed to. I have a whole bunch of loose Zeiss wipes for cleaning lenses. I have a spare uh, eye cup for the Z cameras, just in case I lost mine. I'd like to have a spare with me. Uh, and I have spare lens caps in all the sizes that I might potentially need in another one of those little zipper bags that come with the fire filters. Again, that just keeps them nicely organized in there so they're not floating around and falling out when I open that zipper. So if I close, and, and you know what? If I decide I'm gonna be doing some night work and I want lighting, I've got this little uh, F-stop bag, which is linked on my uh, webpage. It's a padded, sort of smaller than internal camera unit bag, but it has padded dividers. And inside I've got two LumCube 2s, which have an ultra low light mode. I've got a LumCube mini panel, a full size mini panel. I've got three of these little Joby tiniest tripods to set those lights up where I might want them. Uh, and then I have modifiers on the other side, along with a Pluto trigger in case I encountered lightning and I wanted to do lightning triggers. So I've got some little kind of beauty globes for the, for the loom cube. I've got a snoot. I've got different gels to change the color temperature. I've got some gels in case I have some other light that I want to put colored gels in front of. A lot of light modifiers along with that Pluto trigger uh, so that I can use my phone to remotely fire my camera. Oh, and a compass. I always keep a compass in here so that just in case it's, it's cloudy or overcast and I need to figure out where north is, It'll help me find out exactly which direction I'm going. And that can just slip into here above my camera unit. I can actually reach it through the back pocket. And it just makes, it's very modular. It lets me kind of move things around. In my top pocket, which is always easily accessible, I've got another one of these things with just some more uh, lens cleaning cloths. And I keep this thing of lens cleaning cloths in there. I have a waterproof case that holds more XQD cards. So I have three extra XQD cards in there in case I run out of space on my cards. I have a zipper pocket with more uh, Zeiss wipes. I keep that memory card wallet. The, the F-stop bags have a little clip in thing for car keys and whatnot. I keep my memory cards on that. I'll also put my car keys in there too. And I have my little I1, uh, my, my X-Rite color checker, photo passport to color checker that's both a gray card and a luck creating color ch checker. So that's always right there in that pocket should I need it. And I often put my little rocket blower in there too because I use that pretty frequently, especially if it's dusty. So I'll just put that stuff right there. I almost forgot. All this stuff for cleaning except the rocket blower, my little sensor loop, along with some wet sensor cleaning stuff and a sensor gel stick, that's all going to go in that main part of my pack outside the main compartment too so that I've got it with me. And then finally, around the front side, the most easily accessible pocket of all, this big horseshoe pocket on the front, right when I reach in I've got 
my uh, LumaLabs QD strap that I use in case I want to ditch the pack and just carry the camera on my side. I've got my uh, Princeton Tech Viz headlamp where one press turns it to red. You have to actually long press it to go to white so it doesn't blow your night vision. And a triple press locks it so the button's inactive and it can't get bumped in your bag and accidentally turn on the battery. I love this headlight for all those features plus how bright it is. I've got spare batteries, I already showed you for that. I've got the ubiquitous toilet paper, just in case. And a couple of, a couple of straps for just connecting things externally to this f-stop bag. I've got a couple of their Guardian straps in there. So that stuff's always just a quick reach away should you need it. And that essentially is how I always pack my bag. And that way, whenever I'm out there and I need to reach for something, I know exactly where it's gonna be in the dark. I don't even have to put my light on my bag. I just go, oh, my headlamp, especially if I don't have my headlamp, I know it's gonna be right in the top there. Yep, I can feel it. So, you know, my system is certainly anything but the only system. The key, I think, just as in organizing photos or anything else that you're doing and you're practicing is developing your own practice, your own system that you know well and that's gonna work for you. And you know, as you move through time and your gear changes and your bag changes, you can morph and develop it and shift it. And, but over time, you should be kind of perfecting that very system. I carry this bag with me or a larger version of it, the Suka, on all of my major trips. And I often have alongside it my Pelican Air case here. And you know this trip that I'm going on to Eastern Oregon, I'll take this case along too because there's a whole bunch of lenses I want to kind of test against each other. Um, for the Comet Neowise, I'm going to have my 85 1.8. I'm going to have my 105 1.4. For the Milky Way, I want to check out the Rokinon 2.4 SP versus uh, the 20 millimeter 1.8 that I just got from Nikon versus the old 14 to 24. I wanna do some testing and I'm gonna be carrying a whole bunch of stuff with me. But if I'm gonna go packing around, I can always swap what optics are in my bag with what's in here and move things I don't need out of my bag back and forth. I usually have these three things with me on a big trip where I fly. You know, if I wanna go ultralight, I can tuck a couple lenses, some filters and the filter adapters, a spare battery and memory card in here and run super light with my tripod over my shoulder. Speaking of tripods, if I want to carry my tripod, you know, whether, whether it's my big tripod, my big Gitzo that gets 79 inches tall with the 500 AH head on it, the fluid head, or whether it's this new ultralight uh, Leo Photo with the Acrotec panoramic head, the way I do that on this bag of mine is invariably strapping it to the side. I release the compression straps. I love how uh, how F-Stop has these compression straps along with kind of a holder for backcountry skis and I'll put two of the legs under that holder that holds it in tight to the bag. Put the leg back down, that kind of locks it in. Put the lower compression strap on, cinch it. Put the upper compression strap on, cinch it. And boom, you know, Bob's your uncle and off you go. So I think you know a lot of people want to carry their tripod on the back of their pack, and that's kind of a generally, I would say, a negative idea. I think you want to have it closer to your back um, because generally when you're backpacking and carrying loads, you want the heavier objects closer into your back, lower down if possible. Putting it way out off the back actually hangs more weight off your back and makes your pack more awkward. So I'm always a fan of getting that tripod up on the side of my pack tucked in tight to my side, and then I know it's right beside my head, a duck under trees. I don't tend to leave my nodal uh, rail on top of the tripod in that situation, it's just as bulky. I slip it into that front pocket along with my um, headlamp and my luma, luma strap. So there you go, everybody. That's how I carry stuff. I hope that helps out a little bit. Um, it's certainly been a topic of discussion amongst multiple workshop students and a growing number of people responding to both the office hours that we've been doing on Tuesday mornings as well as the, uh, the Approaching the Scene series videos. So speaking of the office hours, we're taking next week off. We're gonna be back on, I believe it's August 4th. And there's a, there's a full moon rising 
about 45 minutes before sunset on August 1st. And it's my challenge to everybody who's taking part in these office hours or any of you out there that want to take it up to find an interesting location to photograph the moon rise while there's still beautiful last light from the sun on the landscape. It makes for a nice even exposure. You can get some really dramatic scenes with all the detail on the moon. If you watch the office hours on YouTube that aired today, Tuesday, uh, July, what is it? Uh, today is the 20... First, you'll be able to see some techniques and tips and tricks for scouting and ways to use software to make that easier for you. And, and we're going to create a gallery of images to go through and look at everybody's images uh, of the moon or even the failed images that didn't work out of trying to shoot the full moon rise uh, this August 1st. So on August 4th, I hope you'll jump over to my Office Hours website. It's a free collective meeting of photographers where we talk all things photographic on Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you can sign up at HudsonHenry.com slash Office Hours. Again, thanks everybody for making this channel such a success and growing it and sharing it and liking it and giving me the, the ideas for the content that you want to know more about. That's what drives this channel. That's what makes it fun to do. Uh, it's really all about you. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week.